In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys step-by-step -step how to make a tactical grenade in Blender. We're gonna start with the modeling. So I'm gonna take you step-by-step -step through the modeling process. And I know this stuff all looks complicated, but we'll take each thing at a time. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make this nice procedural grenade material, as you can see here. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoy this. You can see the render here that I made on the side. It's just a great little result. I'm gonna be putting my final blend file on my Patreon. All of that is in the description below. So I know this is a little bit of a long one. So just bear with me. I'll go nice and slow and we'll make this um, grenade over here. And hopefully you guys will be happy with your result. So the specific grenade that I'm gonna be using as a reference is the MK2 grenade. And I'll put a link in the description to this Wikipedia page. What you're gonna do is just click on the image here and you can see over here it's public domain so you're just going to right click and you're going to go save as image so i'm just going to save it i'm going to put it on my desktop and then what we're going to do is we're going to jump into blender so i'm using blender 3.5 for this and what we're going to do is we're going to go to our front orthographic view and just for now let's just delete everything and let's take that image so for me like i said i've placed that on my desktop i'm just going to drag it into my front orthographic view and what i'm going to do i'm going to try and place this roughly in the center here. Now keep in mind, right, that this is a perspective photo. So because we're in orthographic, it's not gonna be 100%. So we're just really gonna be using this as a rough guide. We're not gonna try and line this up to the millimeter. Okay, so just roughly having this in the middle. Then we're gonna go Shift A, and we're gonna go to Mesh Options. And let's add in a circle. And it's very important that we come here to the Add Circle and we change it to eight over here on the vertices. That's very important um, for this because I figured out that there should be about eight of these things on here. These are um, kind of little segments that are supposed to kind of split off during an explosion. So we now have this. What we're gonna do as well, we're just gonna grab our image and just move it back in our scene. So it's not intersecting with the mesh. And then let's select that mesh. Let's go into edit mode. And in our front view, um, let's go and scale it down a little bit. So we have it not quite as wide as the grenade reference here, because remember, we still have to extrude out these little protrusions. So we're gonna come and we're gonna go G, Z, and we're in edit mode. We're gonna bring it up along the Z to about here. So we're gonna go E to extrude and Z. We're gonna extrude it up to here. S to scale a little bit like that. And I'm gonna actually go over here and enable my X-ray, just so I can select all the verts. And let's select this one here. I'm gonna go E to extrude and Z, bring it down to here. Then E to extrude, Z, bring it down. S to scale it a little bit. E to extrude, Z, bring it down. S to scale once again. Maybe bring it up a little bit and then E to extrude, Z to take it down, S to scale. Let's go with something like that. Now, I might grab this one, scale it up a bit. The main idea here is just to have one for each one of these segments. We've got one, two, three, four, five. And over here we have one, two, three, four, five. And then over here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this, go E to extrude, move it up a little bit. And then S to scale that down for now. So what we need to do as well, is we need to go over here to our face select. We need to select all of these faces here, except those ones at the top. Then we're gonna press F3, and we're gonna go over here, we're gonna type in extrude. And you should be, there should be an um, option here called extrude individual faces. So go down and click on it. And now if you move the cursor, you can see we're extruding individually. So let's just take it out a little bit like that. And if you click left click once, you should be able to come up to this option here and you can use this offset amount. But let's just take it out about this much. And then let's come over here, change it to individual origins under the transform. Let's go S and just scale all of these down individually. And I'm gonna turn off my X-ray for now. And here you can see this is what we have. So I'm just once again, scaling them all individually. I'm gonna go about this much. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just deselect these ones at the top. I'm gonna, with these ones here, go G, Z, and just bring them up a little bit like that. Okay, so now we have this, and what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go to our vertex options. Let's just select these top verts over here. Let's go E to extrude and Z, bring that up to here, and then S to scale, and now we have that. So what we're gonna do to make things a little bit easier, is we're gonna go to our top orthographic view, like so, and then we're gonna go to our face select option, and we're gonna press C to get our selection tool. In our top orthographic view, we're gonna select all of these ones here, go all the way around, and then these ones here. So what we want 
if we only want a quarter of this selected. So you can see here we have a quarter. So there's a 45 degree here and a 45 degree here. And here we have another one like that. Here we have another one. So there's four of these segments. We're gonna grab these ones and go X and just delete those faces. So all we have is this. Okay, so for some reason I've missed this face here. I'll just get rid of that and this one here. So we just want, oops, just a face there. So we just want this bit here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our vertex option. We'll go into our front view. Let's just go into X-ray again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and hit K with the cut tool, click here, then click over here, then go up and click about here, come back down and then click back here. And now we have this. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna select this vertex here. We're gonna go into our right view, we're just gonna move it back and in like so. Okay, I'm gonna turn off my X-ray for now. And what I'm gonna do as well, I'm just gonna come over here, get the cut tool and I'm gonna cut from here to here, press enter and then over here I'm gonna click on this vertex, go to the edge, click and press enter. Then with these two active here, I'm just gonna go to my front view and go S, Z, zero, and I'm just gonna flatten that, like so. So now we're gonna go over to our, in fact, let's just stay in edit mode. We're gonna select this by pressing A. We're gonna go over to our pivot transform, and make it 3D cursor. You can see our 3D cursor is in the center. So if we go shift D R and then 90 and press enter, we can now go shift R and repeat that action two more times. So we've just duplicated that, rotated it 90 degrees, and then duplicated that. So we have it rotated four, four times around like this. Then we're gonna tab back out. We're gonna go over to our modifier. Let's give this a weld modifier. And currently, if you were to select a piece of geometry on here, like a vertex and go control L, it'll only select one of these bits. But if we tab back out, and we come to the drop down here and we apply the weld because these bits that were close but not quite there, they're now fused together. So if we tab back in and we select a single vertex and we go control L, we can see the whole thing is selected. So now we have this part of the grenade. Let's just come over here to the bottom and just select this opening here and press F to fill it. And let's just go and change this back to median point like so under our transform. And let's just come over here to the top and select this vertex here, this group of vertex vertices and go E to extrude, S to scale. And now we have that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna tab back out. We're now gonna go to our modifiers, give this a subdivision surface. And let's just bump it up to two over here and let's tab back in. And to get some of this detail back, let's just select all of these um, verts down here, not the top, but down here. And let's just go Shift E, and if you go Shift E, you can give this a um, edge strength. So we're gonna go and increase it, not all the way, but maybe something like this. I'm gonna tab back out, and now it's not getting affected as much by the subdivision surface modifier. So just once again, Shift E will allow you to do that. So what we're gonna do now, I might even bump it up even more to about three and do the same in the render. And then I'm gonna just right click and go Shade Smooth. So one thing that I'm noticing here is this kind of weird effect here. So I might just tab in and just select these, these top verts over here and just go shift E and just reduce that a little bit. So it's not as sharp, just at the top there. In fact, I might just select down even a little bit more, just go shift E and just relax these top ones a little bit more like that. Okay, that's looking a lot better. So now we have the grenade part done. If you wanna make it a bit wider, you can just go in here select everything and go S, Shift, Z, and just scale it along the X and Y axes only. But now we have a, gr a grenade, and what we're gonna do now is model the tricky bit, which is this bit up here. It's not really tricky, but it's, hard, it's a bit more involved than the grenade. So let's start by going Shift A, let's add in a plane. Let's take this plane up to here. The origin point is right where that bit is over here. We're gonna tab into edit mode, we've got our vertex option, we're gonna go S to scale this down. Then we're gonna take this whole thing and just move it up. So I'm gonna enable my X-ray here. So I'm gonna grab this whole thing, just move it up. Then I'm gonna grab these two verts over here and place them here on the outside, like so. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go E to extrude, E to extrude. And we're just going all the way around, just in little increments to about here. And when we get to the top here, we're gonna go E to extrude all the way back to here. And then over here where it's turning, we're gonna go E to extrude, and that's all I'm doing. I'm E to extrude, I'm moving it, 
E to extrude, click, E to extrude, click. And then over here where it gets a little bit more straight, I'm gonna go E to extrude and extrude it all the way down just before this part over here kind of starts, just over to here. So now you can see we have this over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we wanna make this bit that comes down like so. So the way you're gonna do that is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna go, um, I'm just gonna turn off the X-ray for now. I'm gonna go Control R and roll in some segments about this many. Then we're gonna go into our front view and we just want actually these verts here selected, just these ones here. And we're gonna go E to extrude and Z and bring them down to about here. And we're gonna take each one of these and just move it up till it lines up with this shape over here. So we're gonna take this one up, take this one up like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this one, this one, just these verts over here going all the way to about here. So it's like a C. In our front view, we're gonna go E to extrude, S to scale. And then we're gonna go G and just move them in a little bit like so. And if you have to, you can come here and individually adjust them like this. So we're going for something like this. And then what we're gonna do is we can extrude this vert down a little bit. And then holding and shift, let's select these three as well and go F just to fill that. And then in your front view, you may have to come here and bring this down a bit. And then you can come here and just select these verts, holding in shift, just select these four verts and go F and it'll fill it. Now you may have more segments here than I do. If that's the case, just go control R and add in a segment if you need to, or you can always just select a segment and go X and just dissolve the edge. So more or less, we're going for this sort of shape here. Then let's continue over here. Um, I'm gonna select these verts over here and I'm gonna go E to extrude them to about here. I'm gonna go S to scale and I'm just gonna come over here if I have a gap. Depending on how you did this, you might have two gaps, but you're gonna go ahead and just fill that after you've selected four verts. And over here, we want this to work. So let's just select um, two or three verts over here. Let's just go E to extrude and bring that down a little bit to make this bit. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drag this over here and I'm just gonna select this one, this one, and this, these two here. I'm gonna go F to fill it. And now we have a quad over here and these two are quads as well. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, Control R, I'm gonna roll in about four or five segments. Then I'm just gonna select these verts over here all the way down to here. And in the front, I'm just gonna go E to extrude, extrude them out to here. And then what I'm gonna do is drag them all to the reference, like so. Let's grab this one here. If you have to go into wireframe, if it's easier for you, just do that. We're dragging them all up to here. And then over here, I'm gonna go Control R, left click once and just slide it up. And over here, I'll just fill this gap and press F to fill that. And over here, I can see I have one, two, three edges. So I'm gonna come over here and go Control R and then roll my middle mouse button just one more time. Double click. Now I've got three edges over here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select this edge and this edge and go F to fill. Do the same with this one. And then go Control R to add in a loop here, uh, through here. Left click twice and then I'm just gonna fill from here to here and then close this gap over here, like so. So now we have that bit done. And let's go and give this a mirror, by the way. Yeah, let's just set it to Y. Let's select this and then go G, Y and move it out a little bit. And let's just select this edge over here and go G, Y and move it. You might have to enable clipping and then go G, Y and just snap it together. So now if you select the whole thing and you go G, Y, you can see it's mirrored like so. And it's kind of connecting here in the middle. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the rest of this. So let's just go select these verts over here. We're gonna bring them down a little bit more just to match the reference. And now we're gonna grab these guys over here. In fact, let's just see if we can go Control R. In my case here, the topology will allow me to add a loop in here. So I'm just gonna left click once and then just slide it up like so. And you can see it goes all the way along here. So we have a nice topological flow. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna select these verts over here, the ones that run at the back over here. 
And you can see we want to now extrude it to make this little clasp here. So we're going to extrude it out to here. I'm going to go S, X and flatten it a little bit. So I'm going to bring mine over here and then I'm going to go E to extrude. And I'm just going to go all along here. I'm going to go E to extrude, E to extrude. And I'm just making this little um, clasp over here that goes all the way down. I'm going to go E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude, rotate a bit. And then all the way down here, I'm going to go E to extrude. I'll go to about there. And I'm going to select the whole thing by pressing A. I'm going to go G, Y, and maybe move it out a little bit more. And we'll come back to this bit later. For now, we're just going to tap back into object mode. Let's just make sure to save as we go. So I'm just going to save mine to my desktop. And now we're going to make this bit over here, which is not as hard as you might think. So we're going to go Shift A. Let's go to our mesh options, add in a cylinder and let's just make sure that's 32 verts which it is and we're going to go G Z and move it up S to scale it down and we want to place it right on the top of our grenade here like so and we want it to be the same width roughly as the image here this red bit here and we're going to go control A just make sure to apply that scale then we're going to tab into edit mode and let's just select these verts at the top go G Z and bring them down and let's go E to extrude them up, like so. You can see where we're going with this. And then we're going to go E to extrude and Z to take it up. So extruding it up a bit more. So now we have this bit here, which is going to make that. So what I'm going to do with all of these faces active, I'm going to go E to extrude, right click and go Alt S and scale out along the normals. And that's going to give us this little bit over here. Then what we're going to do, we're going to select this at the top, we're going to go G, Z, just keep moving it up to this point over here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go in. In fact, let's just um, go into object mode and just select these things here and hide them. And let's select this again, go back into edit mode. And we're going to go into our right orthographic view. And then from behind here, we're going to deselect everything. And we're just going to quickly come and just select these faces here like that. And also holding and shift, select these ones over here that we couldn't get because of the angle. So going all the way to here and these ones here as well, just go all the way around. So just these ones here that you can see from the right like this. And then back in your front view, you can go E to extrude and you can extrude this all the way to roughly where it ends over here. Then you're gonna just select these verts over here at the top. You're gonna to go G, X and move them in. So they kind of match this angle here. So now we have this over here and you can go to your top view. And at this point, what you can do is you can enable the Y symmetry. And now if you select a vert here and you move it, you can see it updates on the other side. Let's enable our proportional editing and we're gonna select over here, we're gonna go G. Let's just drag this bit out and grab this over here and move it out a little bit as well just to kind of straighten this out. So just grabbing this, moving it out here. You can kind of see what I just did there, like that. And you can select the top vert over here, go G, Y, and move that one out. Just a little bit, we're just straightening this out so it doesn't fully look round or divoted over here. We're gonna tab back out. And at this point, we're gonna quickly give it a subdivision surface modifier. And you're gonna see this happens, which is okay. We're just gonna tab back in. And at this point, if you come over here, you can go Control R, left click, and then slide in an edge loop. Over here, Control R, left click, let's slide one up here. Control R again, left click, slide one down. And now we're just tightening all of this up. I'm gonna come in here, Control R, left click, slide one down. Control R again, left click, slide one up. And now we're just tightening these things up. We're gonna come in here, Control R, left click, let's slide a loop up, control R again, left click, slide another one up. And now we've tightened that up nicely. Now we can tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And now we have this, it's looking really good. Let's just bump the viewport level up to two and also leave the render at two. So now we can go Alt H to bring the other things back in again. And you can see this is what it's looking like. And what we need to do now is make um, just this little bit up here. And I'm, instead of making it part of this, I'm just gonna make it as a separate bit because that's a bit easier. So for now, I'll just hide these two things here by selecting them and pressing H. Then I'm gonna go Shift A. I'm just gonna add in a cylinder. 
I'm gonna go RX90 and press enter. Then I'm just gonna go G and move this up to here. Go S to scale and put it right over here. Tab into edit mode and I'm gonna select half of this. So I've got these faces active. And I'm gonna go E, X and extrude them along the X all the way to the back here, but not going through. So just like that. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to go to my top view, just select all of these faces here. I'm gonna go X and delete faces. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here, X, delete faces. Now we just have this thing here. We're gonna give it a mirror modifier, set it to Y and then move this out back like this. Now, because I rotated that, um, let's just actually change it to Z because I didn't apply the rotation, but it shouldn't make a difference. Let's just enable clipping. And now let's just bring these two back together again. And now they're fused. So now what we're gonna do, so we're gonna go to our edge select, shift alt, left click on this edge, and then press F to fill that. And then go control B just to give that a slight bevel and then roll the middle mouse button to add in segments. And let's just move this out a little bit more for now and tab back out. Now, if we go alt H, we can see everything else. So I'm just gonna select this, tab back in, and then just move that out till it is where I want it to be. So about there but not touching this thing. We want a little bit of a gap like that. So you can see we have this plate over it and I'm gonna select this thing over here and I might just scale this along the Y at the top just to kind of make it a bit more even with that as well. So something like that, I'm gonna tab back out and now we have this, but we wanna make this thing look a bit better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna now go and give this a solidify in fact, let's just give it actually, let's just give it a mirror modifier or a subdivision surface modifier first. And you're gonna see we have some issues here because we don't have enough geometry. So we're just gonna go control R over here, left click and just slide in an edge like that. And if you can do that, what you can do is just shift alt left click to select all of the edges here and then just go shift E and you can give it a bevel or just a um, edge strength. So increase it and now you can see it shouldn't um, get too affected by the subdivision surface modifier. Tab back out. And now we can give this thing some more levels. So I'm gonna take it up to two. I'm gonna right click and go shade smooth. And then to make it look a bit better as well, what we're gonna do is give it a solidify. And let's bring this thickness into the negative. So it goes inside. So we're gonna go with something like that. So now it has some thickness, as you can see. Um, the nicer, the more you bump up this, the levels here for the subdiv, uh, the nicer the shading on this will look. Obviously, um, the reason it's making this funny shading here is because it just doesn't have enough topology and it's kind of beveling itself a lot around the edges here, but you can select these edges once again, go shift E and just tighten them up a little bit. Okay, so the more time you spend on the topology, the nicer that'll look, but I'm just gonna keep it as it is. Now that's looking cool with some thickness, but this thing here at the back is way too wide. So I'm just going to select these verts over here and I'm gonna go G, Y and bring them in. And in the right view, I'm just gonna rotate them slightly down like this. And I might even bring this one in and this one here. Just kind of easing it in. And now that's looking a lot better. I'm gonna tab back out. And now our grenade is really coming together quite nicely. Now let's just quickly make this pin over here that you can pull. So that's quite simple. We're gonna go Shift A, let's just add in a circle. Come here to your add circle settings. Let's just make it 32 again. Let's just bring it over to the side. Tab into edit mode, go to your top orthographic and just delete this vert over here. And then select this vertex, enable your proportional editing and set it to connected only. Go to your front view and then go G, Z and move it up and roll your middle mouse button just to give it some height. And then go to your top view, disable this and then go E to extrude. And then just extrude all the way along here and kind of just take it to every next vertex. So I'm just extruding, let's stop it about here. So now we have this and I'm gonna tab back out. I'm gonna give it a subdivision surface modifier and then I'm gonna type in F3 and go convert. And I'm gonna to convert to curve. Now we have a curve. All we have to do now is go to our curve settings, go to the geometry, and then under the bevel, let's give that some thickness with the depth over here. 
and I'm going to go with something like that. Okay, that's looking okay. Go to the top. So just have a look at your reference. So that looks about all right, like it's okay to me. So I might just make it a bit more beefy. And then you can still come into edit mode and just adjust that curve if you have to, like that. But for now, that is where I want it to be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go F3 again. I'm going to type in convert and I convert this back to a mesh. Now we can tab in here, select these verts, go F to fill, control B to bevel. And let's just do the same thing over here. F to fill, control B to bevel, tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. And now we can go into our right orthographic view and move it up here. And let's rotate it. And let's go into our front view. And let's just move this up to our reference S and go S to scale. And just kind of line it up with our reference roughly like this. I'm going to rotate mine a little bit and then move it back to about here. And let's have a look at that. Something like that is looking really good. And it's not quite lining up here. So what I'm going to do is with this whole thing selected, I'm just going to go into my right orthographic view. I'm going to go S, Y, negative one, and I'm going to press enter. And then I'm going to rotate it like this. And I'm going to go control N and just go recalculate outside to fix the normals. And I'm going to tab back out. And now this is kind of more positioned the way I want it, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just getting, getting a little bit nitpicky here. I'm just trying to match that up here. You guys can spend as much time as you want um, using proportional editing and trying to make this look like the reference, but um, just something like this as you have it now should be fine. I really wouldn't go too crazy with um, this sort of thing. I just grab this one, move it in a bit, just make it look a bit more natural. So there we have a pool ring over here. And let's now just go shift A, let's add in a plane. I'm going to take mine to the side and just put it up here. S to scale that guy way down, place it just behind here, tab into edit mode. And I'm just going to select these two verts over here. And in the right view, I'm just gonna go E and I'm gonna extrude all the way. Just pressing E to extrude. I'm just making this little part that goes around like this and take it into there. I'm gonna select the whole thing and go S, Y or S, X to flatten it. And then in object mode, I'm just gonna move it over to the side and I'm gonna place it over here. Tab back in E to extrude, Alt S to scale out along the normals and then give that a subdivision surface modifier. And uh, you can come in here, control R, add in a loop, scale it out a bit. Spend as much time as you want with that. I'm just keeping it simple and a right click and go shade smooth. And there we have that bit over there. Um, look at the reference if you want to make it a bit more realistic. I might just rotate it a bit, but you guys get the general idea of where we're going with this. Okay, might make it a bit bigger. So now we have that bit placed in there. And maybe just two more little details here. Just add in a cube, move it up, S to scale it down. And this is optional, but I'm just gonna make, I'm just, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just scaling it and then scaling it up. Just trying to make whatever little um, detail this thing is over here. This little square you see over here. I'm gonna press A to select the whole thing, go control B just to bevel it. And that looks about right. And, um, what else do we have to make here? Um, let's just add in a quick cylinder. R, X, 9, 0. Let's just move it up over here. And this is just me um, doing the finer details now. This is all optional stuff. But I'm just gonna add that little bit in there. Move it out a little bit. You guys can spend as much time as you want looking at the reference. But I'm just gonna place it there and just give it a bevel. Maybe delete the inside face. And I might just select this um, whole thing over here and just move it out on the Y just a little bit more. Um, but you guys absolutely get the point here. Just keeping it really simple for now. So technically these two pieces here should be one piece, but um, I'm just gonna keep them separately. It's just easier to model it that way. But the main idea here is just to get to this point where we have our grenade like this. Um, one more thing I did with my original, I just added in two loops in here. This is all optional by the way but you can kind of move this back a little bit more 
and that might make it look a little bit more um, like what the reference looks like by moving these two back you can kind of see it kind of dips in a little bit um, but like I said this is all just nitpicking at this point so you can see just dividing that in a little bit but spend as much time as you want I'm gonna keep it really simple another thing I'm gonna do quickly is just go in here and select this face over here go E to extrude it down and I'm just gonna go shift alt s and just round it out and then in my front view I'm just going to move that up and go X and just delete that face I'm gonna go control R just add a loop here and just slide it up to tighten that up but what we have here now is that um, circle part which is kind of like this red thing that you see over here and I'm gonna go alt H just to bring everything else back and I select this grenade over here and in edit mode I'm just gonna adjust this till it all kind of matches up a little bit I'm gonna add in a loop here just slide it up um, but at this point like I said I really am just um, nitpicking at this point uh, for the tutorial I'm just gonna go a little bit um, less detailed now just so we can kind of wrap things up now we have a grenade that we can actually texture so that's gonna be the next part so before we do our shading let's just quickly select our reference let's just press M and let's just add it to a new collection and call that ref and then go OK so we have over here our main collection so let's just double click and call that grenade so we now have a grenade which has all our grenade parts we have our ref which we can hide by the way and then we're gonna go shift A let's just add in a plane and let's just go S to scale that up about this much tab into edit mode and then just move it back a little bit select these two just move them back a bit and then E to extrude this up and we're just making here a very very simple backdrop like so tab back out right click and go shade smooth and then just um, with this active go control I just to select everything else let's just move our grenade back up to here and we're gonna take this floor I'm gonna go M and go new collection and let's just call that stage so now we can also take this stage over here and we can turn that off when we need to so with just our grenade um, collection here and all of our grenade bits let's just go shift a let's add in an empty cube let's just select everything else oops control i to inverse so we've got all of this and holding in shift let's select this empty as the main active element control p and let's go object keep transform so now everything is parented to that and we can easily control it we're going to also make sure that this empty is on the grenade collection so i'm going m and just clicking on grenade so that should all be on there so if I hide this you can see it gets rid of it all so for now what we're going to do we're going to actually click on the stage here so it's active and we're going to go shift a let's just add in a area light and go g to move it in fact you can't see it because we got this active um, if we now click on the little eye here you can see here is that light so make sure we have stage active so when we add all of this in here so I'm gonna go actually I'm gonna just duplicate this light for now we want that to be on that stage collection I'm gonna move these two lights just like this and I'm gonna go and give them both a strength of 900 and I'm gonna increase their size I'm gonna do the same with this one and just increase the size and now we're gonna go into our front shift a let's just add in a quick camera and you can position how camera your camera however you want but under the output properties I'm just gonna make it 900 at the top and leave it as 1080 at the bottom I'm gonna go over to my camera and just make it 95 on the focal length and then just zoom out back out a little bit like this then you can go control B and just drag over the camera to limit the rendering to the camera view then go over to your render settings and let's change that to cycles and let's come over to the render max samples and make that 90. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see we have a lit up grenade, which is really cool. So now we can go over to our shading workspace, go into camera view, select your grenade. And now we're gonna make a really simple material. So let's click new, let's just call this grenade. And let's come over here and go shift A search and let's get a noise texture so we're going to grab a noise texture we're going to go shift a search and get a color ramp i'm going to take this factor and drag it into the color ramp 
And then we're gonna come drag this black value up and we're gonna make it more of like a mid-tone gray. I'm gonna grab this white value and bring that down to here. Then we're gonna go shift A search and get a bump. And let's take this color and plug it into the height and then plug this normal over here into the normal of the principle. Let's take the strength down to 0.2 and then let's come over here to our scale and let's leave it at five, but let's take the detail up to 15 and the roughness all the way up to one. And then let's come over here to the base color and let's go kind of for like a greenish yellow and make the value darker. And let's maybe let's take it a bit more into the green. We're trying to kind of match our grenade kind of color. So maybe about here. Okay, that looks about right. If you have to, just um, bring back that reference and you can kind of see the color over there. We're trying to match that as closely as possible. It's kind of like a brownish kind of green and it's a bit darker in the value. So that looks about right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Z and then go rendered. And you can see this is what we have. What we can also do is take this color and drag it into the roughness. And you can see this is looking pretty good. Might just make it a little bit darker, a little bit more green. But what we wanna do now is add some edge wear here. And another thing I'm noticing here, I'm not quite happy with how sharp these are. So we're just gonna select all of these edges. I'm gonna go Shift E and I'm just gonna tighten them all up make them a little bit sharper. And now what we can do is we can tell it that we want some edge wear here. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna just take this material over to the side. And up here, we're gonna go Shift A search and we're gonna type in geometry. We're gonna get a geometry node and we're gonna take this pointiness and plug it into the surface here. And we're gonna go Z, we're gonna go material preview. And then over here, we're gonna go Shift A search and get a color ramp, place it on here. And now let's drag these values here. In fact, we're gonna drag the white over to here and the black we're gonna drag back a little bit. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to isolate the pointiness here. We might have to go Z and then go rendered to really see it. So you can see over here. So I'm gonna drag this white value about here, drag this black close. And what we want, we want it to get to a point where we're seeing the white just on these edges over here. So over here, I'm gonna drag this here, drag this one over here and tighten it up nicely. So now you can see we only have the white here on the edges. And what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna go Shift A, search and get a noise texture. Place it over here, just under the geometry. And let's just duplicate this color ramp and let's place the factor into here. Let's just drag this white back a little bit and this black up. And let's go Shift A, search. And this is gonna be different depending on what version of Blender you're using. But we're gonna go Shift A, search and type in mix. And then go um, to our mix here and place it on this cable. And then plug this color into here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and change it to color. And that's actually where the mix node has gone. So depending on what version of Blender you're using, um, you might just see a mix RGB. Or if you don't see the mix RGB, you'll just have to use this node and change it to color. It'll do the exact same thing. So you're gonna plug one into A and one into B and then plug this into the surface. And then what you're gonna do is come over here to the detail and make it 120 over on the noise. And you're gonna come over here to the mix and let's just make that, um, I think I went with color dodge or something like that. Um, yeah, that looks okay. I might just go with, um, color burn, okay, the color burn works good. So now you can see it's kind of roughed that up a little bit. And now we have a way of mixing two materials. So we're gonna move all of this up over here. So here is our original material. Let's just duplicate, in fact, this principle over here. Let's just make this color like a rusty kind of brown, like this. And let's just take the same roughness and plug it in to the roughness. Let's just take this normal from the bump and plug it into the normal here as well. And now we have these two materials, right? A paint and a rust. Now we can go shift A search and get a mix shader. And then let's plug both of these into the mix shader, like so. And now let's just take this output from the color burn over here or the mix, plug that into the factor and then plug the shader into the surface here. And now you're gonna see we have a nice looking grenade material with this kind of rusty edges. We're also gonna take this output here and plug it into the displacement like so, and uh, that just adds some displacement. Let's just go Shift A search and just type in math. 
and get a math node, place it on here. And let's just change this to multiply. And that just kind of gives us a way of controlling the strength. So I'm just gonna make it 0 0.03 or maybe even 0 0.01. So it's not too strong. So we get a little bit of displacement there. And at this point, you can just come here and work on that as much as you want, change it to a different kind of rusty color. And um, you guys get the idea, but I'm gonna also just take the metallic up a little bit here just to make it kind of look like a metal a bit more with this one. But that's how I made my grenade material. So now um, what we're gonna do to make things a bit easier, we're just gonna select all of this. I'm gonna go Control C to copy it. And let's just click on one of these metal parts, go new, and let's just call it metal. Let's just delete these nodes and let's go right click and let's just go paste. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Z and then go rendered. And to make this, let's just get rid of this, these nodes up here. Anything that has to do with our um, map, let's just get rid of that. And let's just get rid of this rust one over here. Let's just get rid of this mix. All we want is just our original shader here, the, the paint that we made. And let's just drag that into the material output surface. And let's just come over here and change this to metallic. And let's just come here and change the color back to white, but just make it a little bit darker of a value like this. Now we have our metal. I'm just gonna come here to this color ramp and just drag this value here a little bit closer like that. And that's looking really cool. Now we have a metal. So I'm just gonna select the rest of these objects, anything that has to do with that. And then I'm gonna hold in shift and select that object we added the metal to and go control L and just link those materials. And now if we go rendered, we can see all of those things have that same material. And I'm gonna come here to the bump and just make it 0 0.05, so it's not too strong. Or maybe just 0.1. Okay, I'll, I'll stick with 0.18 maybe. So just a little bit of bump, not too much. And over here, I might just adjust this a little bit. But you guys kind of get the idea. If you wanted to, you could probably have left that rust bit in if you wanted some rust. But I kind of just like it the way it is like this. I think that looks fine. So um, that's about it. Um, what we could do as well, if you wanted to, um, you can select these verts over here in edit mode. Just control plus to grow them. And you can give that a material, a sign, and then just make that a nice kind of red material. And let's see what that looks like. Just go into camera view. And I might just grab these top verts on a grenade and just move them down a bit. Let's see what that looks like. So there we go, you can see that's, um, what, that's looking a lot better. And if you wanted to, you could also add a yellow ribbon running around here. That kind of makes it look a lot cooler as well. But this is just a basic way of making a grenade in Blender. And I'll quickly show you guys my original. So this one here is my original, and it's the exact same thing. Everything I just showed you is exactly how I made this, so I didn't skip any part of it. Um, with my original, all I did is I spent a little bit more time on the materials. As you can see here, I added this yellow bit here and I put a lot more effort into my lighting. I duplicated the lights a lot more, added in a few more of them. I added a texture to my background, but that's about it. I haven't skipped anything. Exactly what I've made in my original is what I showed you guys today. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, I'm going to be putting this on Patreon. Definitely check all of that out in the description below. And that's also a really great way you can support the channel so I can keep making this sort of content. I'll see you guys next time.